Hey, do you guys uh, know the time? Anyone know the time? Uh, oh. Oh yeah, you're right. It's time to do it to him, PM. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are gonna cook some more food and probably do a poor job at it, but I don't know why else he came here. That's, that's the sales pitch. <laughs> I'm genuinely so excited for today because this is a recipe, first of all, about two days ago I had never heard of. Someone in my chat while I was streaming told me about Lefsa and how it's this Norwegian staple. It is their flatbread that they love and the way it's cooked to me sounds like the way I would prefer to cook flatbread. It is a carb and it is made with potatoes. And after all the videos I watched on how to make lefsa, which there are a lot of videos out there, uh, it just kept reinforcing that this is a good idea to try to make because it looks really fun to make. You need some like interesting tools. Look at this. Look at this. I have to use this. I have to use this to cook food today, okay? This, it's required. Can't make lefsa without it. Aside from this, there is actually a really cool kind of group of tools that you're gonna need, well not need, but are recommended to make lefsa. One, a potato ricer. I had no idea that was even a thing. Uh, two, you're gonna need a corrugated rolling pin, which is a rolling pin that has grooves in it so it's not completely smooth. And lastly, you're gonna need a pastry cloth and, a, and a, like a sleeve that goes on the rolling pin so that the food doesn't get stuck in the grooves, which, why even put the grooves there at all then? Am I right, bakers? Anyway, I have high hopes for this recipe. I also managing my expectations. I know that's kind of a contradiction, but the recipe looks really good. I think we can do it. I'm also expecting to completely fail at it. This is sort of the conundrum that I've gotten used to each week. So join me as we try to do it to him once again, Norwegian style. Okay, so first things first, we are gonna need potatoes. The potatoes are the heart of the lefsa recipe. Uh, most flatbreads or crepes don't use potatoes that I've seen. And so I think this is a really, really crucial part of why this specific flatbread tastes the way it does. And why if you've grown up eating lefsa, nothing really will taste the same because of the fact that you're using potatoes. I mean, you're using potatoes to make like a crepe flatbread which is pretty cool. I'm a big fan of potatoes. I will put french fries on anything. I will put potato chips on anything. I will put potatoes on pizza. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't. Potatoes are good. We are gonna need to soften our potato up. So you can skin it and boil it after chopping it up, which is not the way I'm gonna do it, obviously, since I'm just holding it and not doing that. I am going to take a little knife and stab some holes in it so that we can have steam escaping. So you're gonna roast this in an oven or in a toaster oven at about 400 degrees for like 40 minutes, I think. I'm gonna make two of them. And so when you take them out, you should be able to stick the knife kind of in the whole potato with minimal or no effort. Obviously you can boil these. I don't think it really matters. I've just decided to, to roast them. Uh, and so that's what I'm gonna do. First step, roast your potato. Wrap it open face, don't cover it, but just like wrap the outside of it in tin foil and roast the sucker up. So it gets nice and soft and then we can proceed with the recipe. In front of us, we have a beautiful array of ingredients. We have a little bit of flour, a little bit of almond half and half, plant-based butter, sugar, cinnamon, salt, brown sugar, and some Jackie's jam. Get jammed. We're gonna use the jam actually for one of the variations of Lefsa, which is the sweet or dessert version because you can make them savory or sweet. There's a lot of things you can do with lefsa to make it how you want it. So my plan here, oh, that's backwards, hold on. My plan here is to hot potato with this hand and cut and scoop out the inside of the potato into this bowl. Uh, we're gonna want the potato to be relatively warm. So I'm gonna let it cool off so where it's not like piping hot, but it mixes better when it's warm, and then also you're gonna have the butter melt in while it's warm. So don't burn yourself, but also don't work with cold potatoes in this part of the recipe. 
Let's see how we're doing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go stab these potatoes. I stabbed them. Uh, it's maybe like a minute away. It's the, the knife goes pretty much all the way through with like very little effort. I just, I wanna make sure they're completely finished. So, eh, fuck it, they're probably done. This is a very, very hot potato. My gloves be like, I don't care. So I'm gonna cut it in half. Oh yeah, this thing is done. This thing is done so Look at that. Beautiful. So we're gonna leave half on the counter and we are gonna scoop half into our bowl here. This is actually a pretty nice way of doing this. And it should like kind of fall out of the potato because it'll be nice and soft by this time. Easy. Oh yeah, what else you got? Let's cut this sucker in half. And let's start scooping. Now, we're gonna use our spatula to rice these potatoes. I really should have two receptacles, shouldn't I? All right, so I'm gonna rice them into this bowl. So, we're gonna fill up the little chamber with roasted potato, and then you're gonna, whoa. Okay, that is satisfying. Okay, that is fun. That is really fun. I would like to do that again now. Here we go. Yo, what the heck? This is so cool. So, okay. In the recipes that I watched, um, it's recommended that you twice rice the potatoes. Some people do, some people don't. But I figured since it's our first time trying this recipe, why not try to make it the best way we can? So we're gonna double rice it. Also, I was on the fence about grabbing this little ricing tool because I was like, when else am I ever gonna use this thing? But after using it literally once, I am already a big fan. Here we go, baby. This is so fun. Hell yeah, dude. Now we're gonna fill up the chamber again. Yo, is it is it a job to just be a potato ricer? Cause I would be good at that. Is anyone hiring? It's raining potato. Holy crap, it's literally raining potato, dude. So now the potatoes have this like interesting texture, which is not something I think I've ever seen or at least cooked with. Um, but first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add, what are we gonna add? A little, like two and a half tablespoons of butter and you're just gonna kind of mix it around. I used uh, Miyoko's butter from plants. Then we're gonna add a little bit of salt and a little bit of sugar, which I mixed together in that bowl prior, and a little bit of half and half, which I'm using the Khalifa Farms. I'm gonna go a little at a time because I'm not exactly sure how much we'll need. But the next thing we're going to use is flour, um, all-purpose flour. I'm using Bob's Red Mill, mixed with a little bit of Expandex tapioca starch, um, just to help it be a little stretchier when we need it. Actually, hold on, I'm glad I caught myself. So before we add the flour, I believe we're gonna wanna chill this. So let's do that. Let's try to follow the recipe as best we can, even though we're not good at that usually. Let's, let's try to be better, okay? We're gonna kinda pat this down to the bottom. Let me get some wrap real quick. And we're going to press it literally right against the dough so it's like in the bowl so that there's no air in there. Now we're gonna chill this for, let's try like 15 minutes. I don't wanna chill it for too long because we gotta keep our momentum. Even if the recipe says chill it for an hour, we can't afford that time and loss of momentum. We need to keep our momentum. So I'm gonna go throw this in the fridge. Don't go anywhere, okay? Don't go anywhere, don't go anywhere. Well, we've let our potato mixture chill, literally. It's pretty cold. It's been in the fridge for actually close to like an hour. And I think it is time we now start mixing in our flour. And I don't have an exact measurement, are you surprised, for the flour, but I'm thinking maybe like probably half this amount. A lot of the recipes I looked at were not very specific with the uh, quantities of flour or quantities of a lot of things, but 
it's perfect for me because I hate quantities of anything and I just like to throw a bunch of shit into a bowl and see what happens. So, um, so I'm gonna put a little bit of flour in and then let's mix around. And I think you want it to be sort of like, you know, like your average dough texture. You don't want it to be too dry, but you don't want it to be like wet and runny. Maybe a little more flour. Careful with the flour because you can always add more flour, but since we don't have any more like potato mixture, you're gonna not wanna over flour it. All right, I'm gonna get in here with my hands. Actually, it might be time for this bad boy, which is actually a pizza stone. And I'm gonna wrap it in this pastry sheet, which is something I got for this recipe. This is where and how we're gonna roll out our lefsas. First, let's just get our hands dirty a little bit and feel this dough out. So I think like something around the size, maybe a little bigger than a golf ball is what we're going for. So the dough actually feels really good. It feels like a great consistency. The texture, it's actually nice because it's cold. Um, and before we put it on our pastry cloth, let's put a good amount of flour down here. And we're gonna flour up this cloth. This is something I'm completely unfamiliar with because I just didn't even know like a pastry cloth was a thing. I, I thought you just roll everything out on the work surface or your cutting board or wherever, I don't know. And then we are gonna take our corrugated rolling pin, which is a bizarre thing. And we're gonna put this little sleeve on it. And the sleeve is to protect the food from getting locked and jammed in the little grooves of this rolling pin. I'm still actually kind of confused as to why we have to use this one. I mean, again, you don't have to. I think you can do it with a normal rolling pin, but this is like the traditional Scandinavian way to make it. So this is all nice and floured. Here's what we're gonna do. Before we actually start this, I'm going to plug in our cook surface and we are gonna use this flat non-stick pan, not our cast iron pan. And I'm gonna heat this. Wait a minute, this is not working. Does this not work? Okay, so quick change of plans. This won't work on the induction cooker. I thought this was induction cooktop compatible, but it's not. So we're gonna have to cook it back there because we really need a flat pan. Uh, once we're done rolling this out, I'm gonna have this nice and heated and ready and we'll just turn around and cook it back here. So I'm gonna cook this on like medium to medium high right now, but let's get rolling, huh? Let's get rolling. Our ball and we're gonna roll it out. Okay, well it fell apart pretty much immediately, so <laughs> this might be the story of today, but we'll see how it goes. Why is it not sticking together? I got all these tools, I got this fancy little rolling pin, come on, you gotta work with me though. You gotta work with me. All right, well it's getting kind of weird at the edges, but now it's at least kind of sticking together. Okay, this is working. Okay, well it just split a little bit, but here's what we need this slapper for. You're gonna wanna stick it under the middle and you're gonna pick it up like this. I'm just worried it's gonna, it's gonna break like right away. All right, well if it breaks, it breaks, let's try. Okay, it broke. So I think the trick is gonna have to be, since we're using gluten-free flour and it's a little bit, you know, you know how it is. We just gotta be a little quicker with how we transfer the ball of dough onto the pan. Because once it's on the pan and cooking, I think it'll be fine in terms of holding together, but it's getting it to that point that's gonna be the tough. All right, here we go. Let's roll her out. Come on, Lefsa. Lefsa, go. That's actually okay. Here we go. This is gonna be the moment of truth. Okay, gluten-free Lefsa is gonna be not something you wanna do. <laughs> this is a mess. I love it. This is like my cross to bear. Nothing I ever bake sticks together. Maybe a little more flour on this mixture. I don't know. We'll try whatever. And we might have to just abandon this stick because the best way to transfer this might be by hand since it's so delicate. So delicate. Oh, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings though. <sighs> Man. All right, I'm gonna make this one smaller and we try again. Well, that didn't work. As much as I like this thing, I don't think it will work with gluten-free dough unless we had like two, but 
it's really falling apart because this dough is just, it's got nothing left in it. All right, I'm gonna roll this one out and try to get it in my hand. How do I do this? What do I do? Um, 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 um. Should I use this spatula? And we just pick it up from two sides? Oh man, okay. Let's try this. This is uh, it's a bit of a mess. Oh my God, it's like we're doing surgery. Dude, what the hell? Should I try cooking this? I'm gonna just cook that. I don't care that it's not the right shape. This is really not supposed to be breaking apart like this. It's just the gluten-free dough, I'm telling you, dude. All right, let's roll another one out. I'm gonna keep this one a little thicker because I know traditionally this is obviously flatbread, so it should be relatively thin, but we have to make an audible. Well, I mean, this is cooking back here, but it's not much of a sight to be seen, so I'll show you when I can get a properly shaped left, so on the damn pan. Should I taste it? I mean, it tastes good. It tastes like dough, but like pretty good. Yeah, it tastes almost like pastry dough. Okay, well this is cooking right, but I'm determined to get one to cook in a proper shape. All right, I'm keeping that one warm and let's figure out a way to get this one on the pan here. I'm gonna have to do some maneuvering. All right, we're gonna use a spatula and the lefts to stick. We have the power of a spatula and lefts on our side. All right, there's a tiny hole in the center, but it'll deal. This is probably the best we've done so far. Actually, let's get this little fucking piece off. Yeah, not bad. Well, let's let her cook up, see what she looks like when we are done. That is hot. All right, I am just gonna taste a small piece. I'm gonna put a little bit of butter on it. Kind of jumping the gun here, but everything's already kind of turned into shit, so let's take a little bite. Holy shit, that is good. What? Dude, that is so delicious. It's like this bizarre combination of like mashed potatoes and like a tortilla. I wanna, oh my God, I can't wait to try a whole one with like butter and jam. I wanna try one with butter and jam. I wanna try one with brown sugar. Oh, dude, dude, dude. Oh, yeah, we're not gonna use the left to stick. I'm afraid to, to break this thing. There we go. While that's cooking, let's try to get another one going. All right, let's roll her out. So I see why the, the little dimples in this is important because when you cook the bread, it's not really puffing up because there's these little grooves in it. It's almost like if you were to poke holes in it, I think. We can still use this tool, just like a glorified knife to shape it into a circle. We gotta have the show one, you know what I mean? We gotta have the one that's on the cover of the magazine. It's it's like, you know what's crazy about this, this bread is like, it almost like melts in your mouth. It's like so soft, but it's also, I don't know, it's hard to describe. Well, I'm just gonna bang out a few of these and uh, hopefully by the end of it, we'll have a nice pile of lefsa. Special gluten-free lefsa. You know, lefsa that didn't really wanna play ball. You know what I mean? But nonetheless, we will have lefsa. So make sure when you get to the intersection, don't go right, go lefsa. We are finished with our lefsa. And man, something about this recipe just feels special. I can't really even put my finger on it. It's, you need to be delicate with the prep and it's such a, like a interesting mix of ingredients. And then when you bite into it, it, it has this like tenderness, this softness that like really makes it completely stand apart from any other bread or flatbread or tortilla or anything like that I've eaten in my life. I did not expect that. Something about the potato base 
of the lepsa makes it almost like melt in your mouth. It is spectacular. I can't, <laughs> I can't even tell you. There was one that I ate while we were prepping. You guys were chilling. I was taking some beauty shots. I took a bite of one with some brown sugar. Oh my God. That is the only topping. Butter and brown sugar, that's all you need. It's so good. So traditionally you're supposed to fold it like this. Um, like it's like a two fold. So it looks sort of like a, I don't know, like a little corner of a circle of a tortilla or something, but it's folded over like twice. So if I were to unfold it, you know, it just, I think this is a really good way to eat it because it's almost like biting out of like a little sandwich. So the three on the bottom, I made dessert ones. And I'm just gonna take a bite out of one of them because this is the brown sugar one and I just want you guys to watch me enjoy this. That's all. Dude, this is a special food. I don't know how else to put it. Lefsa is special. I made Norwegian flatbread. That's not something I ever thought I would say. And you know what? You can too. I think this is a really doable recipe, especially if you're not intolerant to gluten like me, which makes everything difficult. Shout out to you guys for letting me expand and kind of go even further outside my comfort zone. This is, this is one of those meals that I will forever be glad that I learned how to cook. A, because I'll be able to cook it for me and my family for forever and we can all enjoy it, but also, I feel like coming across this in the world after having learned how to cook it and you know learned what it is makes it even more special. Man, I I wish I could tell you how good this was. Like this is the center. It has like cinnamon and like butter. Oh my god. Sorry, not cinnamon, brown sugar. I do have cinnamon though. I think you can put whatever you want on this. Like people do like sour cream. I think like cream cheese, we can try one with cream cheese, I don't know. But it is a versatile food. It is a delicious double carb carb. Potatoes, flour, oh my God. I'm telling you, you've never eaten something that has the texture of this until you've eaten this. It has a very special, unique texture and eating experience. That is all I'll say. This, the, I feel like I've ascended beyond just cooking meals. Now I'm cooking experiences. Shouts out to Norway. Thank you for sharing with me your amazing recipe and foods and cuisine. I appreciate it. Can't recommend this enough. I think you should go make it right now. And you don't need all the fancy things. I can guarantee that. Although if you have a little brother, this might come in handy to command some respect. You know what I mean? Don't hit your siblings. Would you like one last bite before I eat the rest of this? Would you? Would you like it? Okay. There you go. Here. Take a bite. <laughs> I don't even know what that accent is. I just need to eat this more and more and more. Oh my God, so good.